Hello, I'm Patrick Barnard of Save the Park, Sauvons le Parc. I'm speaking to you from Westmount Park in Westmount, Quebec. We put a film up on YouTube. It's called Save Your Park. It's been very popular. So here's the history of Westmount Park. Once upon a time, this was a beautiful place just north of me here. And there were beautiful gorges and water coming down from the mountain, from this other summit of the mountain. And it belonged to, no, it didn't belong to the French. And it belonged to, no, it didn't belong to the English. And it belonged to the native people of this region, people who are called the Huron, the Iroquois. And for them, this space was public and sacred. It was a special place. There's a burial ground right behind me, up, up that hill. You can't see it, but it was a sacred burial ground. And there is a river, an underground river, flowing under this park, which was sacred to the native people. Well, we know the rest of the story. Then came les Français. So the French came, and there were farmers here. Then came les Anglais, and there were English farmers here. Now, in about 1898, 1899, the city of Westmount existed, and the city fathers, I suppose we should say that, maybe the city fathers and mothers, decided that they wanted a public park uh, because, in fact, it was Queen Victoria's uh, special something or other. I think it was her 60th year on the throne. And they purchased this land to the north. It was beautiful. There were two gorges there, uh, diggles, they called them. And uh, when they set out doing their park, they wanted to follow the principles of Mount Royal Park. Mount Royal Park in Montreal was landscaped by Frederick Law Olmsted, the greatest North American landscape uh, designer of all time. Very, very famous man. He did Central Park in New York. So the wise people of Westmount, the government of Westmount, wanted to give the people here a public park, a public place. Now, they couldn't afford to engage the Olmsted brothers in Brookline, Massachusetts on a full-time basis. So they did the next best thing. It is the very, very long letter, pages and pages of correspondence in one single letter sent by Olmsted brothers in Brookline, Massachusetts in 1899 to the city council and mayor of Westmount, Quebec. Now, in this report, which was about that part of the park, and we'll come to the southern section in a short time. In this long, long report, consultant's report, Olmsted brothers made a very simple point. They said, look, you can put up special sporting areas, you can put up special floral decorations, you can clutter a park with bushes, but there is nothing as subtle, to use the words of this letter, as the power of a beautiful landscape, of a simple landscape. That is why for the last 100 years, people in this area, and in fact all over Montreal, have loved this park. It is a gem of North American landscape design. And the Olmsted firm really uh, helped Westmount develop a, a philosophy for this park, keep it simple, keep the natural landscape, encourage people to come in. Hello, my name is Maya Kankoje, and I'm assistant editor of www.montrealsarai.com. I have been living in Westmount for the last 30 years. Uh, when I first came here, I did not know the neighborhoods. So after work, I would walk all the way till uh, sunset. And uh, when I chanced upon Westmount Park, I told myself, this is it. In fact, I remember Emperor Jahangir, a Mughal emperor who, when he reached uh, Kashmir, he said, if there be a paradise on earth, 
this is it, this is it, this is it. I will not say, I would not say that Westmount is a paradise, but it is certainly the home of uh, nature lovers. Now we come to the second part of the secret history of Westmount Park, and it involves these southern fields. In 1910, an amazing guy called Sherard, he was a councilman here who was in charge of the parks, uh, led city council in a, a move, really, to expand the park that was over there. And they appropriated an amazing amount of money, $300,000 in 1910. That's the equivalent of at least five and a half million dollars today. And the city council in 1910 decided to buy these pieces of land that belonged to English speaking farmers. And they bought these pieces of land in order to, as they said, provide an extension of the park. And every time they passed one of these little bits of, uh, you know, deliberation in council, all of them under bylaw 221, every time they purchased a bit of land, they said, this is for the purpose of a public park. Now that's the fascinating thing about the history of Westmount Park. If we go all the way back to the native peoples of this area, they knew that this was a kind of sacred place. And there were private farmers, good people, French and English, who owned this land. But then 100 years ago, the council here decided to buy that land to the north, and especially this land right here for the enjoyment of citizens so that they could have recreation and pleasure and do all the silly things that people do when they're not fenced in. The purpose here was to give people recreation and enjoyment of a free and spontaneous kind. I can't help thinking that there's a lesson here. How is it that we in 2008 or 2010, it's soon going to be, how is it that we never create new public parks? Why is it that some of the very, very wealthy people in this world don't come as philanthropists did a century ago and say, well, we're going to buy this land so that people can have recreation and pleasure. Instead, we seem to be intent upon diminishing these beautiful public spaces that we have in North America. Save the Park, Sauvon Le Parc, is a member of the National Association for Olmsted Parks. We stand shoulder to shoulder with people who are fighting to defend such parks in the United States. And that is why Save the Park fought so hard here, because we believe that these places, this place in particular, has always had a public vocation. And that is what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a, a soccer specialty area. It can be that, but also can be a public park. And that is what we fundamentally believe in. And so that is the secret history of Westmount Park. It's not so strange and it's not so secret. It's a public place bought for public purposes and to be enjoyed and loved by the public for whom it belongs. Walt said of the grass, he said the following. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is a handkerchief of the Lord a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped. Or I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. <laughs>